I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about sampling compressors inside of Nebula, what the positives are, what some of the drawbacks are, but more than anything, understanding the theory and what's trying to be achieved so that you don't go in there and attempt to reinvent the wheel and then just completely get something that either is having no effect or is possibly uh, counterintuitive to what you're trying to do. So with a lot of the plugins that we've looked at so far, specifically compressors, what we have are character compressors, meaning that if I bring in this compressor here, I get the characteristics, I get the classic attack times, um, the release time is built in, so the release itself and that curve and that character is something that's modeled off of the hardware, and I can choose the ratio like so, and, and I know what I'm going to kind of get here, so if I go in... and I go for something aggressive like that, I know what's happening. I know that the transient is popping through. I'm relying on whatever the built-in release curve is here. And then I'm compressing at a really high ratio. Okay, so I know what's going on here. With Nebula, the focus is a little bit more on color and a little bit less on character. So with Nebula, it's very difficult with the sampling process to accurately kind of get the attack, the release, um, and even the ratio. And so instead what you're focusing on are the colors that are just built into the electronics. Now in some cases you can get away with character, but you can't really manipulate and move the settings too much or you'll hear how it falls apart. So let's stop talking about it and listen to an example which I think is gonna clear this up a little bit. And I'm gonna start with more of a character example. Okay, and the character example is under the numerical, do you want a comp? This is a dead giveaway to the actual compressor, but you'll notice that we're going to get a similar sound to what we just heard there um, with the compressor we just had pulled up before, the Decam Free Comp. All right, so I'm just going to bring this in. I'm just going to pull down the threshold. So a fairly aggressive form of compression that really has the transients popping through. And you can hear that the compression is happening. The second I start to mess with the attack and release controls, and specifically this release control, you'll hear how it kind of falls apart. So it no longer sounds like compression anymore. Except for that glitch at the beginning. And this is why when you do have something that's a little bit more like a uh, character compression, you need to trust the person who sampled it. They've sampled it with particular settings for a reason to get you a classic effect like what we have right here. And if we start to mess with the attack time, again, we could run into some problems. Um, not as noticeable, but... And actually, I do like that pulled down just a touch. It seems to actually fit this um, source signal a little bit better. And with ratio, you really can't think of ratio like you think about ratio on a normal compressor. So what's really happening, at least in this example, is that um, we're talking more about a knee characteristic that's changing. So if I can find the dynamics... I can just show you what's going on here. So it already has a ratio that's been set by the person who's sampling it. So let's imagine that that ratio is uh, three, approximately three or so to one. Okay, you pulling down on the threshold is the equivalent to pulling down the threshold here. So the further you pull this down, the more compression that's happening. And when you change the ratio, what you're really doing is changing the knee. So in this example, it's the opposite to what's happening here. But if I pull this knee all the way down, you get something really sharp. And that's pretty much the equivalent of what's happening here. As I bring this up, 
we start to smooth this out a little bit. And what really is special about this particular compressor and the setting it uses is the sharpness of that knee. And that's why I tend to trust the settings that have been put in for me instead of trying to reinvent the wheel because there's no point to try and reinvent the wheel. It's probably not gonna sound like what you're going for. So what we could do now here is we could bounce this out And assuming everything's gone according to plan, we could actually use this second one. I'm just going to delete this. We could use this second one here to be like the parallel um, compressor, and it's going to add more pop to our sound. So if I listen to this one in solo and compare it to the original, by bringing in a blend, we're going to get more transient pop. So let's do that now so we can hear. So you can hear in this example, if you needed to get a little more transient pop through, that would definitely be a pretty good option. Now, the other thing that you can do with Nebula with the compressors, or I should say the other common type of compressor program that you're going to pull up is something that's a little more in line with color. Okay, and it can be very subtle. So my guess is you're not even going to really be able to hear this effect unless you kind of do this experiment on your own uh, because of the compression that ends up happening to the audio files from the time of making this video to uploading it onto the internet. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to high end, which is telling me that there's probably that much, not that much coloration happening already. And I'm going to choose the uh, Digi Dual tube and I have a pretty good idea of what this may actually be uh, but I'm not going to reveal that for you and actually you know what let's use the other one I think the other one's easier to hear we're going to go with the Boeing 747 and again I have a pretty good idea of what this probably is but um, I'm not going to mess around too much with the attack release but what I will do is bring down the threshold and move the ratio up a little bit so when I see settings like this it's telling me this is going for color. We're not even trying to apply any sort of compression really um, because this ratio is so low. It's something very smooth. When the compression is happening, um, it's not gonna be something that you wanna be that noticeable. And this would be much more in line with like a mastering application or something that we'd put on the master bus for color. So let's just mess around with it a little bit, see if we can hear a uh, result. So no change because that ratio is so low. And then we're just gonna level match this here. So we can give it a little bit of output gain. All right, there we go. Now we're in more of a fair ballpark range and we can try to listen to what happens when we turn it on and off. And the result is going to be something that's very subtle. And we can try to bounce this, but what we're going to notice is a problem on the bounce. And this has to do with the handling of the transients. So if I look at this very first transient here at the 1-1 one, one mark and compare it to what I see at the 2-1 mark, this is a loop. It's starting over here, so it shouldn't be drastically different. And we're going to hear that there's a little bit of an error at the beginning. So listen to the difference of what happens at 1-1 one, one compared to 2-1.
So it's quite a bit louder. Um, you actually can't hear like a glitch. Sometimes you will hear like a high pitch kind of a clicky noise, which you want to get rid of. But what I tend to do in this situation, and again, it's very rare that I would use Nebula in this application, is I'd actually get rid of this first transient here and I would end up replacing it with the thing that's on 2, 1. So something like this. I could just go in and I could uh, copy it and then paste it. And then we can obviously go in and consolidate this all together. So now it's a little bit more fair. And now we can compare the two of these. So you can hear the tonal change that's happening there. You can hear how this one's a little bit darker. Perhaps for some people, this one would feel a little bit more glued together. I hate to use that expression, but that's probably the appropriate one. And if you were to then use something like that program on a master bus, it might have a bigger impact. It might have a big effect to tie everything together. Um, but again, you're using it more for color and less for characteristic. So that's the general idea with compressors. As long as you understand what the point is, you won't try to go in there and reinvent the wheel. And that's really what you do want to avoid with Nebula in general, at least specifically for when you're dealing with Dynamics processors.